Hello and welcome back. As promised in my one button macro guide, today I'll be talking about creating and editing macros using GNOME Sequencer Enhanced version 2. I'm not going to hold your hand and tell you exactly what to write for every single class and spec, but I will explain the add-on structure and what all the different boxes are for. Then it'll be down to you to decide what you want the macro to do. Today you're going to need the GNOME Sequencer add-on and I recommend having the Lazy Macros and IC Veins websites available as reference. The links are in the description, so pause the video and get those up and running now. I'm not an endless fountain of knowledge, but you're more than welcome to ask questions in the comments and I'll do my best to help you out. Alternatively, you can talk to the macro authors directly on the Lazy Macros website. Ok, let's log into one of my characters and give this a go. Last time we looked at Beastmaster on my Hunter, so let's try out Marksman this time. To open GNOME Sequencer, type forward slash gs and hit enter. If you want to edit an existing macro, right click on it, or if you want to create a new one, left click on the create button. The configuration page lets you name the macro, select the spec it is designed for and list the talents required for compatibility. As you can see I am running a lone wolf talent, so I will not be using a pet. In the helpful information box you should explain how modifiers will affect the macro as well as any other information. The help link box is for a URL link to a supporting website or video if you have one. At the bottom we can set which macro page is used in certain game environments. By default there's only one page. This is the numbered tab next to the configuration tab. Of course more can be created and allocated. So if you want to have the same button running one macro in a battleground but a different macro in a raid, simply create a page for each macro and then set the correct page number for that situation. Ok so that's the configuration page explained. Next click on the numbered tab and you will be taken to the script editor for that page. There's several input boxes here which can be confusing, so I'll go through each one, tell you what it does and give examples of what to put in them. The first box is called step function. This lets you choose between two modes, sequential and priority list. Sequential will go through a list of actions from start to finish, skipping unavailable actions. Once it reaches the end, it goes back to the start. Priority list will go through the list until it finds an action it's able to execute, then it will reset to the start, rather than carrying on all the way to the end. This means that actions should be listed in order of priority with the highest at the top. The next box is the loop limit. This determines how many times the sequence will repeat before it's considered complete. Then the macro resets and runs through again. Pre and post macros will not function without a loop limit set. The key press box is where you put non-rotational actions such as targeting, pet control and modifier actions. All actions in this box will be attempted on every key press before executing actions in the sequence box. Similarly, the key release box will perform actions after the sequence. You should not put spells in here that incur a global cooldown unless they are on modifiers. Modifier actions will interrupt the macro and cast that spell while the modifier is in use. As you can see in my macro, I have a targeting line to automatically target a living hostile enemy within range, a misdirection line to cast misdirection on my focus target which would normally be the tank, and my modifier. When I hold the control button down, the macro will only cast concussive shot until the button is released. Next are the pre and post macro boxes. The pre macro box is for non global cooldown actions which will be cast before the main sequence. The post macro box is the same but executes actions after the main sequence. Just remember that without a loop limit set, the pre and post boxes will not work. In my macro I have my big cooldown in the pre macro box. This will cast true shot at the start of my macro as long as I'm in combat. If I was using a pet, I would put the mend pet ability in the post macro box. Unused trinkets and equipment do not need to be included in your macro script. There are checkboxes down the right hand side which will do this for you. Lastly is the big sequence box. This is where we put the meat and potatoes of the macro. Depending on the step function you've chosen, you should list all of the actions in your rotation in the order you want them to happen. A good basis for this is to go to the Icy Veins website and find a guide for your spec. Normally there's a too long didn't read version of the rotation which translates well to a sequence macro. You will of course need to do some tweaking and testing to get it right, but for Marksman Hunter it's pretty straightforward. So in my macro we have a cast list comprising of Windburst, Mark Shot, a Murder of Crows, two Aim Shots and Arcane Shot. 
The reason I put aim shot before arcane shot is because on the first run through there will be no focus, so it will skip aim shot and cast sidewinders. But the next time around, it should cast aim shot twice to make use of the vulnerable debuff before casting sidewinders again. Unfortunately, I don't know a way to stop sidewinders being cast twice at the start of combat because you'll be focus starved, but later on it evens out nicely. You might have picked up that I've written Arcane Shot in the macro, but I'm talking about casting Sidewinders. Arcane Shot becomes Sidewinders with the level 100 talent. It's good practice to label spells by their original names rather than talent names. So which step function would be best for this macro? Well Sequential will cast a maximum of two aim shots before casting Sidewinder again. It is safe, it is reliable, but if I set it to priority list, Aim shot could fire off more than twice before recasting Sidewinders. This would be good for lock and low procs because it would cast off both free aimed shots and then cast normal aim shots until my focus ran out. The downside is that my vulnerability debuff could wear off, but that's unlikely in this talent build. So when making your macros, you need to think about these sorts of things, how different spells work off each other and how they need to be listed in the priority list. Go to a target dummy and give them a test and find out what works best. In this case I found that priority list was best for me. Gnome Sequencer works on a per key press basis. When you push the button down, GSE performs all of the actions in the key press and pre macro boxes and performs one step of the sequence. Then when the key is released, it performs the release and post macro actions. On the next press, it does the same again, but moves on to the next action in the sequence. Bearing that in mind, let's talk about cast sequences. Let's take a look at some mockups I made. In the first example, we have a cast sequence amid normal casts. Remember that Gnome Sequencer performs one action of the sequence with each key press. So in this situation, the sequence will be like this. In pass 1, it will cast 1, 2, A, 3. In pass 2, it will cast 1, 2, B3. And then in pass 3, it will cast 1, 2, C3. In the next example, we have two cast sequences in the same script. The first pass will cast 1, A, D, 2. The next pass will cast 1, B, E, 2. And finally, it will cast 1, C, F, 2. However, as this is a gnome sequencer, it will skip over any action that's not available. What this means is that a car sequence is unable to step beyond an unavailable action. So if B is on cooldown, the new sequence will look like this. 1A D2, then 1E2, then 1F2. The first sequence is locked out until B becomes available again. Then it will carry on stepping through the first sequence, although it could now mean that it's completely out of sync with the original. Some people have used this as a clever way to delay certain actions, but that's a lesson for a more advanced tutorial. Note that time based reset functions that you'd normally use in a car sequence don't work in Gnome Sequencer. If you get your macro working really well and think it could be useful to other players, there is an export option. Select the macro you want to export, the export button should then turn red, click it and highlight all the text and hit Ctrl C. Log into Lazy Macros and locate the correct class spec thread. Scroll to the bottom, enter a title and description, and when you're ready to feature your exported macro, hit Ctrl V and select all of the text that you just pasted. Click on the code box in the options above your text, and this should put it in a nice black box when you post. If you're done, simply post it, and this script should be easily copyable by any other users. I'm actually really happy with how effective this simple macro worked for me, so I will export it to Lazy Macros when I publish this video. If you found this video helpful, please hit like. I will be releasing more Warcraft videos, so to keep up to date, hit subscribe. If you're already a subscriber, please forgive me for taking a little bit longer than usual to make this video. I needed to make sure that I got my facts straight, and I had a lot of testing to do myself. As always, thank you for watching, and until next time, have luck and good fun.